Okay, six teams for Caesar zero Scaramouche, let's get it. Firstly, we have this one tailored towards using him as a hyper carry charge attack unit. He has high multipliers on his charge attack, so for a couple of these teams we try to utilize that. But bear in mind, there aren't many supports that accommodate charge attack characters, so most of these teams will use normal attacks instead. Farazan's gonna increase your animo damage, as well as shredding the enemy's animo resistance. Ben is given an attack buff, and Zhongli is given a shield for some comfort as well as even more resistance shred. In order to get Farazan's burst back quicker, I've built a Pioli for energy recharge with a Favonius Warbow, and if you're still struggling for EI, you can give Bennett the Favonius Sword and Zhongli the Favonius Lance. Using this team allowed us to deal charge attacks of 50k plus which is solid, and the pyro from Bennett is going to trigger Scaramouche's passive giving him more attack. A big downside with this team, as with all hyper carry teams, is that Scaramouche is the only one dealing any proper damage, so your rotation is going to go through phases of dealing a lot of damage, and then none at all. Additionally, it can sometimes be difficult to get Farazan's burst back even when you're running full ER on her. To be 100% honest, she's a wet fart of a unit at C0, so you'll want some constellations on her. If that's not for you, maybe some of these other teams will be. This free seems nice. Layla's just come out so I've opted for her, but if you don't have her, Diona will do. We want double cryo for crit rate from the cryo resonance, as well as the crit rate from Scaramouche's passive. And we want Hydro for Freeze, as well as Scaramouche's passive which will allow him to float with his skill for longer. With Rosaria giving crit too, we can build less crit rate and more crit damage on Scaramouche and Yolan. With his run in Yolan, we're using Scaramouche's normals as opposed to his charge attacks with the first team, and I preferred this playstyle. I feel the crowd control that Kazuha, Venti and Sucrose offer would make them better options than Scaramouche here from a meta perspective, and we'll talk more about that in the conclusion part of the video. However, floating over enemies as a powerless to move, and hitting them with big Animo and Hydro tires was nice. I feel like it captured the whole god complex vibe that Scaramouche has going on, and in Domains and Overworld, he was deleting enemies. Before we move on to the next team, drop a comment and let me know what teams you like Scaramouche in. I come up with these ones, but I'm open to more suggestions. Now it wouldn't be a DPS showcase if we didn't have some variant of a national team. National teams are still some of the strongest in the game, and is one that provides value to Scaramouche because with it being Hydro and Pyro, he can get an attack buff and a skill duration buff from his passive. I do feel like the heavy lifting is done by the other three here, but Scaramouche floating about the place gives the team a different feel than usual. If you're playing Sucrose as a driver, the team can often feel more fixed and static. Having Scaramouche instead, you lose the crowd control but you gain a bit of movement and quicker attacks. And I think that makes it feel a little like the child variant of this team. I wish there was more to say with this team but the simple fact is, as strong as it is, is this same team you probably run a thousand times already just with a different driver. I found that to be a recurring theme with Scaramouche teams, just like with his Taser one. It's similar to the last team in that a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the supports, but I feel it's better than the last one. The quick normal attacks from Scaramouche are triggering damage from three units here as opposed to one. I feel like he makes for a good driver in this team too because of the quick attacks and the swirls. You can run him with a new set for his damage, or you could even run him with a four piece very S in Venera to buff the others and use him as a true driver. There's a big question that looms over this team though. Is Scaramouche better here than Sucrose? He'll deal more individual damage, trigger the other character's attack slightly quicker, and generally provide you with more on-field movement which is nice. But Sucrose has crowd control, and all the elements of a kit that buff elemental mastery and elemental damage. If you're planning to pull Scaramouche already, I think this is a team that you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of, but if you weren't considering pulling him, I wouldn't pull him just for this team. It's satisfying to see all the high numbers and bright colours, but one thing you don't see is that, Scaramouche aside, all these characters are C6. If they're all C5 instead, they'll still do damage, but there'll be a visible difference. The constellations on these characters bring a lot of value, so definitely consider this if this team's the main reason you want to pull him. Also, if you want to use Lisa against single targets in plays of Beidou you can do, she can hold thrilling tails and reduce the opponent's defense with a passive which is useful. Everyone has her, and while she's better with constellations, she can carry out this role at C0, and you'll only need to build a burst up. For artifacts, you can either use 4P's emblem, or give her a 4 piece noblesse to give some more support to your other characters. Bear in mind though, it won't be as comfy because you lose Beidou's shield. Now this team here is for the 1.1 players. We saw Scaramouche and Mona interact, they both have massive hats. Match made in heaven, right? For these story reasons, I've thrown them into a team together. I'll be 100% honest though, this team's going to be garbage in most Abyss Chambers. I'm running it purely to squeeze them into a team together. With that said, it's strong enough to beat anything earlier than Floor 12 and anything in the Overworld. It's another hyper carry team similar to the first, so the playstyle might not be for everyone. It's not my preference. 
but for those that care about the story interactions, it's one that you can make work. A lot of players feel the combat content in this game is too easy, so maybe you could challenge yourself to 9 star floor 12 with it like the Giga Chad that you are. Zhong Li's giving a resistance shred, Farazan's doing her animo shit, and Mona's gonna put the omen on enemies as well as the thrilling tails buff. So Scaramouche's damage is actually alright here. The major downside is that you get such little uptime on it that it's not worth running if you care about meta. I don't use Mona that often though so it was nice to take her off the bench. And for the last team, I decided to run this double animo and double geo one. It doesn't take full advantage of Scaramouche as you're not running any elements to give him a buff from his passive, but it's one that you might run Shouting so I figured I'd give it a go and use his charge attacks again. We're trading the extra damage you get on Scaramouche from Bennett in the first team, for separate damage from Albedo as well as the Geo Resonance. Farazan's only C0 here so the team will perform better if you have constellations on her. I don't advise swiping for them when you could simply save your primos for future units, but if you happen to have some constellations for her, this team will be a lot better off for it. I gave Hazo a score of 6 at C0, so I'll give Scaramouche a 6.5 because I feel he's marginally better, but even a 6.5 feels generous. The issue with Scaramouche is that he isn't the best option for any of the teams I tried him in. If you run in a Taser team, Sucrose will be a better driver because of his support abilities and crowd control. If you run in a Vape team, Sucrose will be a better driver again. If you run in a Freeze team, a crowd control unit like Kazuha, Venti or again Sucrose would be a better option. I think Scaramouche's value is that he can be slotted in and do a decent job in a bunch of different teams, which is easier for newer players that haven't built as many characters to drive those different teams yet. He also provides some fun and utility and exploration, but I didn't factor that into his score. The score is purely on combat. To be more useful to long term players, he needs a niche or a team where he's the best option. Reading his charge attack multipliers and the fact that his charge attacks don't consume the stamina points that keep him in the air with his skill, I thought charge attack spam might have been the way to go but that was underwhelming too. There aren't many units that accommodate that playstyle. Farazan provides support for Animo but not enough to make Scaramouche more valuable than Xiao. Albedo deals nice off field damage but with him being Geo, the damage can't react with Scaramouche's Animo, or trigger any of the buffs he gets from his passive like he does with Hydro, Cryo, Pyro and Electro. What would make him better is if we had a charge attack buffer like Yunjin does for normal attacks, or if we had a character tailored towards dealing big off-field damage triggered by charge attacks like your Lansing, Joe and Beidou do for normal attacks. Technically, Beidou's burst can be triggered by charge attacks, but the multipliers aren't high enough to justify playing charge attacks because their value is in using quick normal attacks to trigger more instances of their damage. I always say throw meta out the window and just pull for who you want, but if there are characters coming up that you prefer over Scaramouche, I think he's one of the safest skips we've had. If you enjoyed the video, I'll be dropping another showcase in Farazan teams, so if you want to see that, subscribe and take it easy.